We have seen how to use the link component to navigate between pages in our application. But there is more to navigation than just basic links. For our first topic, let's see how to customize the appearance of our links. By default, the link component wraps its children in a text component. This is the reason links currently look just like text. Now you may want your navigation elements to look like buttons in certain cases. For that, you can use the pressable component as a child of the link component and forward props using the as child prop. So in index.tsx, at the top, import pressable from React Native. In the JSX, add a new link component. href is going to be slash products slash bestsellers slash PlayStation. Next, we're going to specify the as child prop and then invoke pressable component with a text component that renders PlayStation. And instead of inline style, we will use the style sheet component just like our other components. From React Native, import style sheet, and then const styles is equal to stylesheet.create, but instead of a container, we will define button styles. We will set background color, padding, and border radius. And we will also define styles for the button text. Color white, font size 16. On the pressable component, style is equal to styles.button. And on the text component, style is equal to styles.button text. The as child prop tells the link component to forward all its props to its first child, which is the pressable component in this case. This lets us create custom buttons, cards, or any other pressable element while maintaining the navigation functionality. Check the device, and you will see the link looks like a button. Very straightforward to customize the appearance of links. For our second topic, let's see how to navigate between pages using relative paths. When working with nested routes, Writing out full paths can get tedious. That is where relative navigation comes in. Let me show you an example. From products list page in index.tsx, if you want to navigate to the product details, we can set href to dot slash one. This is because we are already in the products directory and relative URLs will be resolved relative to the directory we are currently in. However, for an index.tsx page, relative URL is resolved from the URLs directory. So to avoid this confusion, we can use the relative to directory prop. So link href dot slash one relative to directory. Check the device, navigate to products, click on product one, and you'll see that we are navigating to the first product details page as expected. Now, if this file was a products.tsx file instead of an index.tsx file, we can skip the relative to directory prop. For example, in login.tsx, let's add a link to the signup page. So import link from Expo Router and add a link to register. So create account with href is equal to dot slash register. This time, we don't have to use the relative to directory prop. In index.tsx home page, let's add a link to the login page. Reload the app by pressing R in the terminal. And now when I click login, we can see the create account link. And when I click on create account, we are navigated to the register route. The navigation is working as expected. Relative paths are most useful when working with multiple levels of nested routes. For our third topic, let's discuss imperative navigation. While the link component is great for most cases, sometimes we need to navigate programmatically. For example, after an API call or a form submission. That is where the router object from Expo Router comes in. Let me show you an example. In login.tsx, let's add a button to log the user in. So import the button component from React Native, invoke it with title set to login, and on press, we call router.push 
and the path we want to navigate to, slash profile, for example. Make sure to import the router object from Expo Router. Back in our device, reload the app, head back to the device, navigate to login, and now we see the login button. Press the login button, and you'll see that we are navigating to the profile page as expected. More specifically, we are programmatically navigating to the profile page. Now, although this works, there is a small correction necessary. In the browser, you can see that after we log in and see the profile page, we can still go back to the login page by clicking the back button. And this can happen in our mobile app as well if we are using a Stack Navigator. Typically, once the user is logged in, they should not be able to press the back button to go back to the login page. So to fix this, we can use the replace method instead of push. The replace method will replace the current screen with the new screen instead of adding it to the stack. Go to the home page, click on login, click the login button, and now when you click back, you're brought to the home page instead of slash login. The router object is pretty helpful with programmatic navigation. Push, replace, and back is probably another method on the router object that you will use in your app to programmatically navigate between pages. All right, for our last topic, let's see how to redirect users to a different page based on a condition. For example, if the user is not logged in, you can redirect them to the login page. In the profile page, so profile index.tsx, let's add a redirect to the login page if the user is not logged in. Begin by importing the redirect component from Expo Router. Within the profile component, I'm going to set a constant is logged in to false. And then I'm going to add a condition. If not is logged in, return the redirect component. And we're going to set href to slash login. So we are basically redirecting the user to slash login if they are not logged in. If we navigate to the profile page, we will be redirected to slash login. Our redirection is working as expected. Now the value of is logged in is hard coded to false, but in a real application, you will check the user's authentication status and set the value accordingly. Right, we have now covered the core concepts of pages, layouts, and navigation in Expo Router. In real world apps, you will often need to combine these concepts to create more complex navigation patterns. But luckily for us, Expo Router provides built in components that make it easier. Let's see what they are next.